Hey guys. Welcome to couple. Please like and subscribe if you like the video. In 1953, Don Barksdale became the first African American named to the National Basketball Association All-Star Team. That same year, Lentine Price's performance of Summertime at a Metropolitan Opera Gala made her the first African American to sing with the famed New York Company. It was also the year that James Baldwin published Go Tell It on the Mountain. But while progress was underway, African Americans' opportunities for economic and professional mobility were extremely limited. That reality was reflected in the vast wealth disparity between black and white households. In 1953, the net worth of the typical black household was just 20% of that of the typical white household, according to a recent working paper by the Federal Reserve Bank of Minneapolis that offers an unusually long-term look at the evolution of America's racial gap in household finances. Today, there are many more high-profile examples of African Americans receiving widespread acclaim in politics, the arts, business, sports, and beyond. But the success of those individuals isn't representative of the economic status of African Americans as a whole. By 2013, the wealth of the median black family in the US had fallen to a mere 10% that of its white counterpart. Put another way, in 1953, four-fifths of white families made more than the typical black household. Now, closer to nine-tenths do. The trend is similar, though less striking, for income, note the paper's authors, economists Moritz, Kuhn, Moritz Schulerich, and Ulrich Einsteins of the University of Bonn. The typical black household in 1953 was making just more than half of the income earned by the typical white household. As of 2013, that earning gap had barely closed, the median black household still made only 58% of what the median white household did. What's behind the vast racial wealth gap? One contributing factor, according to the authors, involves the long-lasting effects of the 2007 housing market collapse. Of course, the housing market crash and the 2008 financial crisis that followed hit many Americans hard, regardless of their race and for most, those effects have lingered. The economists found that only the top 10% wealthiest households in the US have more wealth now than they did before the 2008 financial crisis. Poorer people, on the other hand, are far worse off. In 2016, the average household in the bottom 50% had around half the wealth they did in 2007, as Quartz's Dan Kopf recently wrote in a story about the Minneapolis Fed Papers broader findings.